how then will Everton approach tonight's task? We'll simply play our normal game, says Howard Kendall. Significantly, perhaps, the man who made those headlines in the first leg is missing. Kevin Richardson's injured wrist prevents him from playing. His place filled again by Andy King. And with Andy Gray cup-tied, of course, Kendall looks once more to Graham Sharp to lead. Villa Park, a cauldron of noise as Everton kick off, attacking the goal to our left. Around 45,000 packed in here tonight. 13,000 have travelled down from Merseyside. And Villa, of course, looking to the whole end to provide the encouragement that's been so invaluable to them on big nights in the past. But Everton was a cushion from a two-goal lead and the confidence, too, from a 14-match unbeaten run. Great run. Now to Kirbishley. Frantic start. The shot from McMahon. Not all that far away, either. Been a bit of a scare for Steve McMahon on the way to the ground today. His car was attacked by Everton supporters. They threw traffic cones at the car. And certainly he and his wife, who were chatting with him at the time, were rather shaken up by the incident. Here's Shaw with Rashidi who cleared that educated left foot and Heath could be in still Heath off the bar and away for a corner by Gibson Spink was beaten there acceleration and skill of Heath the shot coming off the bar and away to safety but just look at the skill there of Heath so unlucky with the shot back some consistency to Villa's back four Sheedy with the kick. All oh, six just wide from Sharp. He was so close then. And we can see the flick from Sharp off the post. to win, the glorious layoff, McMahon, to steer it wide, it's a half chance certainly then for Steve McMahon, set up by the delicate flick from Peter Wirth, Mortimer was involved, there's the touch off from Wirth, and McMahon couldn't get a shot on target. King with the free kick. The header off the bar again. Good shot. Pushing by the referee. He got a knock for his troubles too. Graham Sharp is using his arms there. The ball coming back off the bar. He's hacked it and already blown for the foul. Certainly pushing. And Villa now will make their substitution. Right out is the player coming on. Mark Walters has gone off. So Paul Ryder has a chance to make a name for himself. Scored at the last round at Norwich. A raw talent. One really for the future. It's King. Oh, mistake. Ryder! Right the mistake by King and Ryder. They want to open up this semi final. What a moment for Paul Ryder. has paid off. Dreadful mistake then by King. And right out into the corner of the net. It's 1-0 and it's 2-1 overall. 16 minutes into the second half. And there's plenty of time for Aston Villa. And my word, they'll take heart from that. Sheedy. Emerson looking to come straight back. Irving, just saved it by Spink. Emerson rebounding straight back. But Villa now will be a different side, you can rest assured. Shaw finding Gibson. Away from Irving. Still Gibson, into his right foot. Right out again! To the side, that's it. 
substitution. Ball right up. Almost got a second one there as the ball flashed across the area. No Everton player on the end of it. It was right up. Andy King, who's come into the side instead of Kevin Richardson, the hero of the first leg. And I wonder what's going through his mind now. Mortimer again in strongly. Shaw to Gibson. He's made a lot of probing runs, particularly in the second half down the middle left flank. And here he goes again. In for Shaw and Thorpe with over the top. Oh, Peter Wood will be disappointed with that. He really might have scored then. He kept the header down. It was Gibson who made the break down the left. Over Shaw and with over the bar. The protest really came from the, the whole end, the Villa supporters. Quite a few arguments, though. Gary Williams got it with a penalty. It looked to me a very dramatic dive by Paul Rydell. And now into the last minute of this Milk Cup semi-final second leg. Graham Sharp is hoisting it forward. And Everton now kicking everybody back. What a moment that will be for Howard Kenton, the manager. The second of criticism himself this season. And this will be just the fillet they need. The 45 minutes are now up. We're into injury time. Peter Reid, calm it all down, he says. We're so close. I don't think Kevin Ratcliffe will be in too much of a hurry to take this free kick. Keith made a run across the area. It was read by Brett now, but he failed to make contact. In a corner. Just what Everton needed at this stage. Just look at those celebrating supporters corner is taken short shady in towards sharp Spinks had to cut for it referee looks at his watch the 1984 milk cup final will be all merseyside as their fans spill onto the pitch, Everton are back at Wembley for the first time in seven years. Deservedly so on their showing tonight. They've lost by a goal to nil, a goal from Paul Ryder that gave Aston Villa hope. But the two goals from the first leg proved enough. Final second leg. Graham Sharp is hoisting it forward. And Everton now yanking everybody back. It's over with and over Mountfield. Everton free kick. Some breathing space. As the momentum dies down. Away to my right. Delirious Everton supporters will take some convincing now that their team aren't going to Wembley. What a moment that will be for Howard Kendall, their manager. He's taken some criticism himself this season. And this will adjust the fillet they need. Forty-five minutes are now up. We're into injury time. Peter Reid, calm it all down, he says. We're so close. I don't think Kevin Rackley.
Cliff will be in too much of a hurry to take this free kick. He's made a run across the area. It's good by Brett now, but he failed to make contact. In a corner. Just what Everton needed at this stage. Just look at those celebrating supporters. towards Sharp it's been cut to cut for him the referee looks at his watch the 1984 Milk Cup final will be all Merseyside as their fans spill onto the pitch Everton are back at Wembley for the first time in seven years deservedly so on their showing tonight they've lost by a goal to nil a goal from Paul Ryder that gave Aston Villa hope but the two goals from the first leg proved enough but the overall score is Everton to ask. No champagne for you yet, Andy? No, it's just like all the champagne's gone, but I think it'll uh, definitely come later. And what does it feel like to be back at Wembley then? I've had it too for the say it's been a long time. You know, 77 was the last time we played Villa in the League Cup, and I've had about six losing semis in between. and. Uh, uh, you know, after that back pass in the last 25 minutes, it's a beautiful feeling. Well, you beat me to it. I was about to ask you, you what do you remember about that moment? Not a lot. I think Derek Mountfield missed the first ball over the top of him all night, like the only one he missed. And, um... <laughs> Sorry? And I was just... I was just going to work it like and it bounced up and, and it was just, you know... Made it interesting anyway, didn't it? Made it interesting. You <laughs> At that stage, Aston Villa put you under a bit of pressure. I mean, uh, did you feel the guilty party for a while? Oh, yeah, till the end. We're still like, but I mean, we're, we're never under danger, were we? 2 nil up, you know, with 25 to go. We were never, never really under that much danger. There was putting a bit of pressure on. We never really hit in the goal. We'd had three that hit the bar on the post, so we, we could have won the tie easily. But, um, you know, I was feeling guilty, yeah, really, really upset us like, but when the final whistle goes, I mean, that won't be remembered now. The only thing that will be remembered is a Liverpool Everton final. Thank you, God. How would I presume that champagne in that plastic cup? It most certainly is, yes. I'm delighted uh, for everyone connected with the club, uh, for the fans and everyone. We've, uh, we've made it. We've, uh, we've trailed Liverpool uh, for so long and it's, uh, I'm just delighted we're involved in the first Merseyside Cup final and we mean, to, we mean to go there and win it. Well, I suppose after 14 years without a trophy, and as you say, Liverpool always behind you, it's made it doubly hard for you. Well, it, it was very, very difficult. I mean, it's always difficult to, to match Liverpool. I think everyone in the Football League are trying to match Liverpool. But at least we, we've given our supporters something to shout about. They're going to have a, a day down in London, and we hope to provide them with, uh, with the trophy at the end of it. So what's this about you having a family who all support Liverpool? Yeah. Every, I, years ago, I used to support Liverpool, but I woke up, it was a bad nightmare. No, but serious, they all did, but I think the law changed the, the minds tonight. They'll probably go down to Wembley and uh, support me. So, uh, I hope my dad's made up at home and uh, we'll all have a drink tonight. But, but it is right, we, they are all Liverpoolians. Uh, my twin brother's been down to Wembley in Rome to see them in the European Cup Finals. And I, I have supplied a few Liverpoolians with uh, a few Cup Final tickets in the past. Now, what are you going to do about your family? They're going to have to promise to support Everton before they get one. Well, they better do. They're not going to get a ticket. <laughs> I'm going to give them to all the Evertonians. Everyone, I wish everyone out there got a ticket tonight. And I hope they do. But uh, I'm just really made up for the supporters. And uh, especially for the boss and the, and the lads because we were under a bit of pressure before Christmas and we've gone out this year and we've been unbeaten and it was a fantastic night. We were a bit on edge when Andy gave that terrible back pass but uh, we've all come out on top and I don't, I don't know my way to Wembley but someone will have to tell me where it is. Well John, you enjoy that champagne, thanks Cheers. very much indeed. All the best. Cheers. I got with me glasses. <laughs>